All right, thanks for joining us today. What we're going to do is take a look at how to find either an absolute minimum or a relative minimum for a quadratic function. Now, the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and hit y equals in your calculator and enter whatever your quadratic function is. Now, when you enter your quadratic function, you want to make sure that plot 1, plot 2, and plot 3, notice how these aren't highlighted, so you're going to want to make sure that they are turned off. When they're not highlighted, that means they're turned off. So go ahead and enter 2x squared plus 2x minus 12 in your calculator. Now sometimes, depending on who uses your calculator or who you share it with, you may have other functions stored down like way down in y9 or y0. Just make sure that there's nothing else in there, that that's all cleared out. So we've got our function 2x squared plus 2x minus 12 and y1. Now to graph it, there's a whole bunch of different options. And what we're going to do is hit our zoom button. Now you can see where it says z-box, zoom in, zoom out, z-decimal, z-square, and so on. Most people are going to start off with number 6, zoom standard, which you can get to either by arrowing down, or you could just type the number 6 on your keypad. Either one will get you a picture that looks like this. Now the zoom standard window takes your x and y coordinates, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the window. Notice our x min and our x max, they're just from negative 10 to 10. And the same thing with our y min and our y max, they're from negative 10 to 10. Now if I look at my graph, notice I can't see where the bottom is, so I'm going to have to adjust my window a little bit. But I can tell that this is going to be, uh, it, if I look at the shape of it, our, our, parabola, our quadratic kind of goes down, and then somewhere down here it looks like is where it's going to bottom out. So I'm going to have to play with my window a little bit to do that. Now when you play with your window, you've got a whole bunch of different options. If you look at your graph, the thing that we want to change, we want our graph to go lower. So in our options for our window, what we're going to do is change our y minimum. Because right now it's at negative 10. So we're going to want to go lower than that. So I'm going to try, say, maybe negative uh, 12 and, see if that, and then hit graph and see if I can see the bottom now. I'm almost there, not quite yet, so I'm going to go back to my window and change my y minimum. Now I'm going to try like negative 15 and see if that works. So sometimes you might have to play around with that a little bit and get it uh, until you can see where the bottom is. And in this case, yes, we can finally see where that is. So right down here now we can see where the bottom of our parabola is. So our parabola goes down and then it, hit, it bottoms out and then comes back up. So once we see where the, where the bottom is, we're going to take notice of the shape of our parabola. And since it's at the very bottom, that's going to be the lowest point in our quadratic function. It's going to be the lowest point on our graph. Now that is often referred to as an absolute minimum. Now if it's not a quadratic function, maybe you have a, a trinomial that could be a cubic or a quartic or some other function, then it might be just a relative minimum. But more on that in other courses later on. Now to find this, we're going to use our calculator to help us with that. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Up here on this top row, you see a trace button. Right above that, it says calc. So we're going to use that feature to, have, uh, to help us figure out where that lowest point is, where that minimum is in there. So to get to the calc menu, we're going to have to hit second and then trace. From our options, we want the minimum, which is number 3. So again, you can arrow down, or you can just hit the number 3. Now the question is going to ask us, a the calculator is going to ask us a series of three questions. Left bound, right bound, and then guess. Now you see here where it says left bound. Notice where the cursor is blinking at. What we want to be do is move our cursor so that we are on the left side of that lowest spot. So we're going to move our cursor to the left a little bit so that it's on the lowest piece of it. Now, if it's the lowest y, notice your y coordinates right here. As you move these around, as you move your cursor around, that y coordinate is going to change, as does your x coordinate. But we're really focusing on the y. Because right here, we're at negative 12.33. If we move left, we're at negative 12.48, negative 12.46, negative 12.25. So now our y coordinates are starting to go back up. So we just want to be on the left-hand side of that lowest spot. So we'll just hit Enter. And then our next question is going to be right bound. So again, we're going to take our cursor, and we're going to move it to the right of the lowest y-coordinate. 
And so once we pick a spot, we'll just go ahead and hit enter. And then our next question it's going to ask is guess. Now, some people will actually try and move their cursor to around where it's going to be, where they think it's going to be. Other people just hit enter right off the bat. It doesn't really matter. So once you're satisfied with a guess, or you can just go ahead, hit enter, our calculator is going to give us some stuff. Now here's the stuff that we've got to take a look at. We've got negative 0.5, and then a whole bunch of zeros, and then a 2, and then y equals negative 12.5. Now, the coordinate that I want to focus on right here is the x-coordinate, negative 0.5, and then a whole bunch of zeros, and then a 2. The algorithm that's built into the TI-8384 family is has a little bit of an error, and so the, really the x-coordinate is just negative 0.5. So if you were to be asked this question on a test, what's the axis of symmetry, you would just put x equals negative 0.5, because remember the axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate for your uh, relative maximum or minimum. Now, once you know that the x-coordinate is negative 0.5 or negative 1 half, we have a y-coordinate of negative 12.5. So our absolute minimum for this question is negative 1 half, negative 12.5 or negative 12 and a half. And again, what, when you see your answers, they're either going to be both in decimals or both in fractions, but you won't see them mixed up. So that's how you find the absolute minimum for a, a quadratic function or any type of function within a given region. Hopefully you found this helpful, and come back and watch another video if you need to figure out how to find an absolute maximum. There's one on that too. We've got you covered. All right, thanks very much, and have a great day.